in 12 years, we only have one divorce. Wow. Which, How many couples married? I mean, hundreds, if not Amazing. thousands. It's that piece of advice that brings them from going from one long relationship to the next into getting married. Men who are great at dating are typically not great at relationships. Men who are really good at dating are usually not really good at relationships. Yes, yes. Okay. I really sorry. Uh, I yeah. tangent a lot. So no, thank you for bearing you remind with me. me of myself because I do the same thing. And I love it. I love it. Are you Italian? What are you? Yes, I'm Italian. Oh, we didn't even talk about that. Oh my gosh, you're Italian yeah, too. Of yes, of course. Okay. Well, let's Alessandra Conti, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Lila. It's so nice to be here. I'm very excited to talk to you because you are so fun and doing such fascinating things. You are a matchmaker but you're also a super faithful woman. And I'll be honest, there have been many times over the last decade, especially since getting married five years ago, that I have wanted to do matchmaking for friends or just wish mm -hmm. that there was more matchmakers to help all of these amazing single people of faith, conservatives, whatever it is, find love. Mm -hmm. So thank you oh, for what you do. It's so wonderful. Thank you, Lila. It's so nice to be here. And no, I'm so excited to meet you in person. I wanted to tell you how I found out about you. So I, I, you know, in the Catholic community, it's a very small Catholic community. And um, a, a bunch of people kept telling me that I reminded them of Lila Rose. And my I was sister. like, oh my gosh. I was like, so I looked you up and then I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. But I had to just say, I mean, I'm, I'm complimenting myself, but by saying <laughs> Go <this>. for it. <laughs> but I was like, wow. And then of course I, you know, I just love what you do. So Thank you. yeah, Thank excited. You. Well, I would love to hear the whole story of Alessandra Conti. And we're going to get into your advice for singles and dating, which I think is really important. You actually know we're an inspiration for Rachel, who was on the podcast recently, Hoover Canto, and her book on dating. And people love that episode. But we're going to get into what you're looking for when you're having people that you're matching together and best practices for best dating yeah. successes and your just your whole journey. It's really fascinating because what's so fascinating about you is you're this lovely woman who is in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. which is kind of a crazy city. I used to live there. I left. I'm, I'm in a little less of a crazy area down south, but you're in Los Angeles and you're working with all kinds of people, but you're living your faith unapologetically as a matchmaker. So there's so much to talk about. Okay. Let's start with um, a little bit about your background, Alessandra, and then how you started doing matchmaking. Yes. No, absolutely. Yes. I mean, I've, I've now been a professional matchmaker for 12 years. And so myself and my sister, who's also a devout Catholic, who I actually set up with her husband, and now they've been married for like six or seven years, which is amazing. Um, but anyway, so we started our company, um, we moved out to LA, and we just hit the ground running. And we started our matchmaking firm. And she was graduating with her master's from Oxford. And I had graduated from with my undergrad from American in DC. So we just but we always we had this really strong pull to LA. And it's not I mean, we only knew what we saw on TV about LA. Like, it's not like we had spent a lot of time in Los Angeles, but we watched The Hills and Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, which now so crazy that the circle of of things that I was on the last season, which was so, oh my God. I want to hear more about that. So <laughs> much fun. It was such a blast. Um, what an experience. But yeah, I mean, so we, yeah, we hit the ground running and we really started with one client and we knew that we were really talented at matchmaking. How did you know that, first of all? How did well, you know you were talented at matchmaking as a 20-year-old? Yeah, yeah, we, I know. We had always set up our friends. So it was just, we were known in the small town that we grew up in as being like the go-to matchmakers. So for prom and even like before then for like the middle school, school dances, we would say, oh my gosh, Jessica, have you met J James? And we would be, because you know, when you're young and honestly, not that much has changed, but the boys are on one side and the girls are on the other side. And you need that person that's kind of in the middle. That's going to be like, oh, 
come up, come over here and come dance with, you know, Jessica. So that was always us. Um, and we, I, I mean, we have couples that are still together to this day from when we matched high with them from high school, which is so wild. Um, so was that also like a sister bonding thing where you and your sister would just connive together and <laughs> bring happiness to so many people. I don't know. It was, it was literally, yes, it was that. And we used to also do these little makeovers, which was so much fun. And like, I, you know, I love all of, I'm the girliest girl ever. Like I have a clothis in my, um, in my home, which is like, a, it's like a full closet and office. And um, so yes, I'm like super girly girl, but we would literally, um, we would tell our girlfriends, okay, you know, your hair looks amazing when you wear it down and like, okay, do this little bit and that little bit. And yeah, so it was, it was just a whole, it was a whole thing that we did even, even when we were young. But um, let me guess you guys had like 50 best friends, right? Everyone's like, Alessandra and her sister, they're my best friend. <laughs> we, we had we had a really good, we just, we came from a really wholesome neighborhood and just a wholesome upbringing. Like it was very, we had a good, I had a great grade. I always say we had a great grade, but just really nice kids. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, when we then moved to LA, we knew we, we knew we were really talented at this and it's just, it's just our gift. You know, mm -hmm. some people have a gift for, you know, singing and some people have a gift for, you know, painting, but we have this gift. It's a God-given gift that we're really good at matchmaking and we're really great at bringing two people together and understanding compatibility. And I think we were really great at it, at it in a natural way. But then, I mean, over now, it's been 12 years. We now have a team of seven matchmakers that work at our company. Our office is in the middle of Beverly Hills, which is so much fun. And especially for, you know, me, um, it's a blast because I just, I love, I love it. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's really the story and it, it grew really organically. I mean, we started with that one client and how did you find your first client for your LA matchmaking company when you were 21? When you were 21, I know. Um, well, you know, I have a sign out on the street, like, yeah, we like I will marry you. I will get yes. you married. I will get you married. <laughs> Husband hunters were right here. Um, well, we actually, we would go to all of these different events, but our very first client, we actually met at church. We met at Good Shepherd, which we were, I was love just talking Good to, love Good Shepherd. I was just telling you guys. It's a beautiful Catholic church in Beverly Hills. In Beverly Hills. And Jonathan Rumi, um, who was just on your show, mm -hmm. he also went to Good Shepherd as well around that same time. Um, but yeah, so we met our very first client there. But we, we've always been very business minded as well. So I think that um, there's, you know, somebody can be an amazing matchmaker, much like somebody could be an amazing singer. But if they don't know how to, if they don't know business, if they're not able to or willing to put in the work where, you know, you're starting a business from nothing, um, it's not going to work out. You could have all the talent in the world. But, um, but yeah, so I mean, we... We met our very first client, yes, at at Good Shepherd of all places, and then we realized though it was very interesting because we're we're from the East Coast, so the West Coast and specifically the LA dating scene was so bizarrely different than than the East Coast, the values, the mindset. Um, so our first client was 40 and she was a woman and she was Catholic and she only wanted to date a man who was able to get married in the Catholic church. So, but in our minds, we were like, oh, okay, she's 40. So therefore, you know, we're going to look for men in their late third, mid to late thirties and maybe early forties. But then we learned that a lot of those men want to date a lot younger because they wanted they want marriage and children and Meaning they don't those men feel... as Catholic men, particularly yeah. the, the men who want to get married in the Catholic church want to date a woman that hopefully can be the mother of their children. I, yes. But mm -hmm. the thing with her, her caveat was he didn't have to be Catholic. He just had to be willing to get married in a Catholic church. So, but that's, I mean, that's also the thing I think with sometimes with, with, you know, 
Christian and Catholic dating, to me, it's it the, you know, not to insult our very first client who was lovely, but you know, the 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 values are mm. are really what we should be looking for in match. We can't have learned this over over 12 years. And so somebody could say, yeah, I'm open, but it, that's, you know, we have to peel back the layers. Um, but anyway, yeah. So we we started that way. And then did you find her a man? We did. We found wow, her an amazing, wonderful. amazing man. Still married? You know, I haven't checked in on them, okay. but I will say in 12 years, we only have one divorce, wow. which how is many couples, pretty, how many couples? Married? I mean, I, I, I hundreds, if not amazing. thousands. That's an point. That is, yeah, that is an amazing track record, Alessandra. Yeah. It's, I mean, well, we have seven matchmakers, so it's not just me. So as our company has evolved, I, my specialty is, um, I love doing like the media. It's so much fun for me, but also I tend to get a lot of the public figures as clients and like the celebrities, um, but just people who are in the public eye who are very successful, um, sometimes strong Catholics, other times not strong Catholics at all. <laughs> so that's always fun. Um, and I don't even say that sarcastically. Like it is, it's really fascinating to you know, talk to them in a secular way, but also like, I know everything that I do is, is rooted in my faith and in my, in it, I, I have to, I have to root myself. And that's the only way that anything that I say is going to ring true because, you know, I, I do have 12 years of experience, but ultimately, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's, really important to come from that space. Everylife.com is America's fastest growing baby diaper company. I love everylife.com because they not only make amazing products, these diapers are leak proof with great quality materials, but this is also a diaper that is made with love by a pro-life company that is giving back to the pro-life movement. So when you go to everylife.com, you set up your diaper subscription for that little one in your life that you love. You're not only getting an amazing product for your little one, but you're also supporting the pro-life movement. Did you know that companies, unfortunately like Pampers and Huggies, are owned by conglomerates that actually are pro-abortion, that donate money to groups like Planned Parenthood? Not so with everylife. Everylife.com is not only a best-in-class product for babies, but it also loves babies and supports babies by supporting the pro-life movement. So go to everylife.com today, order your diapers and wipes subscription or gift a friend who might need diapers and wipes for their little one and use the code Lila at checkout for 10% off your order. That's everylife.com and use the code Lila at checkout for 10% off your order. So walk me through what the process looks like for matchmaking. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, whoever so the way that our company works is that we have a database which i think a lot of people hear matchmaker or celebrity matchmaker and they get a little intimidated because they think that oh like if i only work with the celebrities therefore oh this isn't going to be a good fit for me but i will say with mm -hmm. our company um we do have a team of seven matchmakers and we work with a lot of young professionals and also a lot of young catholic professionals um we were just at the literally at the ycp conference and we did this huge matchmaking mixer and it was wild. And we set up, we had 400 attendees and we matched, I think it was like 160 people. Okay. Hold on. I got to <laughs> ask. All right. So I love, by the way, it was you are like so the answer funny. to so many people's prayers. I'm sure oh I, I love what you do. I hear stories almost on the daily of people just struggling in this space and yeah. being married myself. I'm so grateful to God that I am not in the dating pool right now because it's so hard for so many people. And I, of course, I love my husband and he's the best man I've ever met. Okay, when you had these 400 young Catholics at the YCP conference, I was there a couple of years ago speaking or a few years ago, so love YCP. What did you what information did you get from them for you to be able to match 160 of them? <laughs> well, I mean, the matches were Holy Spirit matches. That's what we called them because it was not I mean, we were not, you know, but did you get questions like, did you have them like fill out a form? 
We we did it in a way. I mean, it was it was a part of the mixer. Okay. So they had to find they had, it was like a game, and they had to find their match based on the questions that they were answering. And then each person had a match that had the little form. So it was a fun game. It, what, what questions were they answering? It was it was like a bingo thing. So it wasn't okay, like a, okay. it, no. It so wasn't this was more just like speed matchmaking. Dating. Yeah, it all was right. just. I was like, wow, meet. that's a I know right? that is oh a my feat goodness. of all feats. <laughs> <laughs> like right then and there. No, we literally called them holy spirit matches because it was not of us like it was it was just it was I chance it was, it was it was very fun. much chance it was fun it was just to get them to break the ice yes. and to, to talk but i mean you know i learned i always learn i learn every single day from the clients that we work with and from you know the men and women that i date coach and that the other matchmakers date coach and matchmake and the date feedback forms and all of this but yeah i think that people are really frustrated and people are just really when they when they come to a matchmaker or a dating coach it's almost like they're like I'm at my limit. Like I've done everything and the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So they come to us and they're like what am I doing wrong? And can you please help me? Um, so I, I, you know, I, I hear a lot of frustration. A lot of people would just, a lot of them would prefer just tell me what to do. Like, just tell me who I should be with and just make this easy for me. Um, so we try to do that as much as possible. Obviously we don't tell them what to do, but for so database members, becoming a part of our database is very easy. However, they do have to meet with a matchmaker before we, you know, before before we accept them and before, because if it's not a good fit, we don't want to waste anyone's time, anyone's money. Um, but they get into the database, which is only $200 mm -hmm. for the year, which is very affordable, um, even for a young, you know, a young budding professional. Um, and then that makes them eligible to be matched with mm -hmm. one of the priority members. So priority memberships begin at 10000 They go all the mm -hmm. way up to like 90000 and plus, mm -hmm. which that's though for the, you know, the uh, moguls and the celebrities and the, you know, the, the 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 men and women that want to only they have a very specific idea of um who they want to work with um usually me <laughs> you know usually why wouldn't they <laughs> <laughs> who can blame them you know um but for priority members it's amazing because they're meeting a certain number of we call them bachelors or bachelorettes over the course of the year um we as a team of matchmakers interview background check, social media check, and sex offender search every single potential match that they're meeting. And then we have a membership manager that's then setting up all of their dates. So it's it's really, it's really wonderful. And I mean, we work with a lot of Catholics and Christians, but we also work with a lot of Jewish men and women. Mm -hmm. And we work with, you know, even Mus Muslim men and women. We work with agnostic and atheist. We work with all mm -hmm. types um, of men and women. But but yeah, I mean, it's it really it's a really just different and effective way. It's the opposite of the dating apps. What are yeah. you asking when people get into that database? What kind of information? Obviously, you're checking out to make sure they're not a crazy person, a convict, you know, a felon or whatever else. But yeah. you're, you know, getting obviously I'm, I'm going to guess like their photo and things like that. But what kind of things are you getting in terms of determining compatibility or recommending, oh, this person would love this one. Is it like, oh, they both like going on hikes. I think everyone in LA is like, I love hiking. Yeah, I love hiking. There's like the one hiking trail in LA. I'm going to go. <laughs> I mean, there's more than that, but you know, I'm a hiker or I like yeah. to travel, you know, yeah. I think everyone, most people like to travel. Like what, how do you determine compatibility? Yes. That is such a good question. I mean, I know that with us, compatibility is, is I, I think the human element is such an important part of the matchmaking process because it's, you know, we're learning about somebody beyond mm -hmm. just that they like hiking, that, you know, they went to Duke, that they, you know, they are, they have their PhD and they're this and they're that. Like we're learning their body language. Mm -hmm. We're learning the way that they're presenting themselves. We're learning what their value system 
system is. We're learning if they've ever cheated in a relationship before. We're learning about, you know, what their triggers are in a in a relationship, what worked in the past, what hasn't worked in the past. We're learning about, you know, what who they're typically attracted to. And I know that for women and men, a lot of times what's keeping them single is their type. And they're so fixated on this type that this is who they're attracted to. And they, they're meaning so- like brown hair, blue eyes, six, four, finance, I mean, yeah. Yeah, whatever it is. Like, it has to be a particular fun, or they need five, tattoos yeah. and to be like a biker. I yes. don't know. There, there's a high, mm-hmm. I find that there is for the, the amount of women and men that come in with such a, they think that they have this perfect person ideal that they want to meet. And they, and if somebody is not fitting in that box absolutely perfectly they then get they they self sabotage and even if that they are fitting in that box perfectly because we've we've tried it all so we know okay somebody could 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 fit in that box perfectly but there has to be um there has to be that core values that 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 really stronger um deeper compatibility but also the way that people are dating um, and the way that they're, when they're meeting each other on dates, that is a much better predictor of success than like once we've done our job and we figured out, okay, the three deal breakers with us are, do they want to get married? Do they want to have kids? And is religion compatible? So if those three deal breakers are there, amazing. That's, they have to be there. Those are our absolute deal breakers beautiful. But then other elements such as, does the guy like hiking? Okay, great. He likes hiking. She doesn't like hiking. It's fine. It doesn't mean it's not a match. Um, But those fundamentals are there. But then this, these other elements are the life lifestyle. How are you living your life? You know, what are your, what are you prioritizing? Um, What is your vision for the future? What is your purpose? What are your goals? Like those elements should be aligned Mm -hmm. as well. Um, But when, what we found is um, it's really the, I think the biggest predictor of success is when they're actually on the dates and when they're meeting each other and the energy that they're bringing when they're going on their dates. Um, so, you know, a, 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 that's why date coaching is really essential and important. What is that date coaching? Yeah. So date coaching is basically where they, the client or the Mm -hmm. database member or whatever, the bachelor, the bachelorette, they're meeting one-on-one with one of the matchmakers and they are learning about basically how, if they're, if they've developed ineffective habits in the way that they're dating, it's figuring out, okay, how are you presenting on a date? And let's tweak these habits just a little bit so that you're presenting in a different way. Because, you know, for a lot of women, when they go on a date, a lot of times it's a very, it it can feel a lot like an interview. And men as well, first dates a lot of times can be, can give interview vibes, which is not, it's not, it's not effective for developing any kind of romantic rapport. So we, like an example, we teach vacation dating. So it's like, pretend like you're going on vacation. When you're going on a date, just pretend like you're going on vacation. Put your little vacation playlist on, you know, really get in that vibe when you get in the Uber. Just be like, wow, I am heading to Italy right now. This is so exciting. This is so wonderful. And make the goal of the date to have an enjoyable evening and to just enjoy the company of meeting somebody new and not the goal to be, let me ask them my very specific list of questions of, you know, exactly, you know, how many sisters and brothers do you have? You know, how many, what's your highest level of education? So it's instead bringing in that energy, that playful energy, that vacation energy, um, that, you know, is, is really effective. Yeah. When they're going on these dates initially, are you, they, do they already have those questions answered about 
this is the person's educational background, yada, yada, or is it a blind setup? Well, so with us, it's they get a small date or bio before they go on the date. And some have photo shares, some don't have photo shares. So it's it's either some do, some don't, some go, you know, without seeing a photo, which I actually think is a a more effective way of meeting somebody, especially through a matchmaker, even though a lot of people disagree. Um, but I mean, I've seen so many men that are amazing guys who have horrible online dating profile photos. Like they have mirror pictures and they like, or they're, you know, they're, they're the fish, the, the fish. Have you heard about this fish thing? Like all of these men have fish in their photos and <laughs> women are not about the fish, you know, guys stop <laughs> using the fish. Um, or even the idea of a selfie, the problem with a mirror photo or a yeah. selfie for a Oof. guy is it kind of like signals something not very attractive in and of itself. Yeah. So that already, but the poor guy, he's just like, I need a dumb photo for my dating app. Like I have a brother who's in the dating market right now and he's like sending me his profile information. Like, what do you think, sis? And, you know, I, I'm like, okay, giving him the feedback, but yeah, it's hard. You know, if I'm like, take a picture of myself, it, it feels awkward, I think for guys. And I think that signals through the dating app. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, I mean, I, I think for men, what I would recommend is, and I recommend this for men and for women always, mm -hmm. photos are essential. Like if you are, and even though I'm a matchmaker, I own a matchmaking company, of course, I'm a big believer, diversify your dating portfolio. Matchmaking is amazing and wonderful. However, it's not for everybody. Like we work with you know, successful professionals. If you're not yet there in your career, then it's probably not the right fit. And that's okay. It doesn't have to be. But um, but even if you are working with a matchmaker, I'm a big believer in utilizing the dating apps, but you have to utilize them very strategically. Um, so photos, like everyone says, oh, men are visual creatures. So are women. And women have to be very discerning on the dating apps. And you have a very quick, you don't have a lot of time to make a really good impression. So for men, exactly, if you have a sister um, or even if you have a female friend or even somebody that you just admire in your community, um, or you can always hire a dating coach or a matchmaker, we're more than happy to help if you don't want to do this. But I I love, um, I love it when I, I've coached men to say, hey, you know, I, you know, Lila, would you look at my, would you look at my dating profile? Here are some photos that I have. What do you think? Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about this? Um, also getting a professional photo shoot taken, if that is financially doable, 100% go for it. Um, that's your photos are you, it's, it's the way you're presenting yourself for men. Um, suits are great. And even if they're in a friend's wedding or something like that, just take a solo shot, mm -hmm. you know, be like, Hey, would you mind taking a solo shot of me um, and getting that. Uh, but also for women, we say doing a professional photo shoot is wonderful, but also getting, setting aside a half a day where you invite a friend over and say, listen, I will bring you to dinner or brunch as a thank you, but I need you to help me take some dating profile photos and have a couple outfits and really take it seriously and present yourself in, in the way that you want to be presented. Um, and I also find that with women, a lot of times with their dating photos, I think they can be very well-meaning, but I also think that sometimes a woman will put on like a bikini photo and she'll just kind of ignorantly, like, and, and innocently, like I said, not in a, not in a way of anything other than, oh, I look great in this photo. And, you know, it was here I was on vacation. It was so much fun. But when you're putting out a bikini photo, you're then going to attract the wrong kind of men. Um, so it's important to, to, to really look at it, look at your profile objectively and think, okay, what am I presenting here? Am I presenting that I'm out at the club every night, that I'm, you know, in bikini photos, and but yet I'm looking for my husband? Or, you know, 
what am I presenting? Am I, am I presenting, you know, I'm in a beautiful little dress and, and, you know, smiling and all of that. And red is also a wonderful color for both men and women. Studies have shown that red on dating apps really yields high success. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a great freebie. Thanks, Alessandra. Yes, anytime, anytime. WeHeartNutrition.com is a family-owned American-based company that creates wholesome supplements for your body at any stage of life. I love WeHeartNutrition.com because they're using the highest quality ingredients that are research-backed that are in their most bioavailable form. That means they're most easily absorbed by your body. I also love that WeHeartNutrition.com designs their vitamin packages specifically for where you are in your life or your health journey. So they have packages to help you achieve fertility so that you can conceive. They have packages for when you do conceive and it's a great prenatal. They have a great package that I have right now for when you're postnatal after you've just had a baby to resupply all the nutrients in your body, the vitamins, the minerals. And they have packages that are premenopausal and postmenopausal. And they of course have your standard everyday vitamin for the every woman. Check out reheartnutrition.com, order a bundle of vitamins directly to your door and get the supplements that are best designed for your health. Go to weheartnutrition.com and don't forget to use the code Lila at checkout for a full 20% off your order. That's Lila at checkout for 20% off your order. One last thing I have to share that I love about We Heart Nutrition is that this is a company that is pro-life and pro-family and a company that donates a full 10% of the sale back to the Pregnancy Resource Center movement. So your money is going to help moms and babies in need, and you're getting an amazing vitamin and supplement. So go to weheartnutrition.com, put in your order, use the code Lila at checkout for 20% off your order. There's so many questions I have, and I know yes. people listening, especially if they're single or they want to help their single friends, there's probably yes. questions that are popping up in people's minds. So I'm going to do my best at an asking them and getting those answers. So First of all, you said that you had such a high, I mean, it's a very high success rate that you have, which is amazing. Have you run into having people who were seeking matchmaking services and complaining about being single be too picky? Because I asked this, and I'll just provide context here. One of the things I've observed among complaints among women and then some complaints among men, it's funny, they both kind of complain the opposite, complain about the same thing is, oh, I I can't find anyone. Uh, they're just, they're not, the men are not interested in asking women out. They all want this like perfect girl that doesn't exist. And then I think the men are just like, oh, they're not interested in me because they all want the perfect man who doesn't exist. Yeah, this is, a, it's a daily struggle. Like it is genuinely a daily struggle. Even yesterday, we had a bachelorette who, you know, we've set up with these incredible men, incredible men. And she just, you know, went on another wonderful date with a really phenomenal guy. And her feedback was that you've been setting me up with unattractive men. And we're like, this, I mean, all of these men have been, you know, not that height is, it makes somebody attractive or not, but she's a taller girl. So we set her up with men that are six foot plus, like uh, they, you know, work out, they're not that, not physically in, but, but this is, the, so I was very frustrated. Um, but this is a daily, this is a daily thing. So is her complaint, I don't feel attracted to them or more, they're not attractive enough. I not, think there's a difference. Yeah, yeah. She's saying they're not attractive enough, but I think the core of it is I don't feel attracted to this person because a lot of times men who are great at dating are typically not great at relationships. It takes a very different okay, skill set. Okay, that's such a powerful point you just made. I want to capture that really quick. Men who are really good at dating are usually not really good at relationships. Yes, yes. It and is, men who are good at relationships are sometimes struggle in dating. Most of the time. I would venture to say as a matchmaker for 12 years, men who are great at dating are typically, they're just not good. And the good guys are typically not great at dating. They're awkward. They they say the wrong things. They don't know all of the, the all moves of or the whatever. Moves. Yeah, the yeah, smooth talking. Exactly. And so to me, it's actually a really big red flag when a woman is has just an amazing first date and she's just Interesting. like, oh my gosh, she was amazing. We just have this, if I hear like we have this soul connection, I'm like, red flag, red flag, red flag. Ah! 
abort mission or not abort mission, but trust, but verify. And you want to keep dating that man because men who men are, there are a lot of guys, especially when you're using dating apps, they have developed a strong skill set at going from A, B to C and A, B and C is not, I mean, it's, sleeping with a woman. This is what even if, um, and I think that also a big misconception is that, oh, all because a guy is Christian or Catholic, that doesn't mean that he's going to respect a woman's boundaries physically. Um, this is, it's, this is the reality. It's, you know, every man that a guy could be going to daily mass, but he could also be saying, you know what, the one thing, uh, I don't have to, I don't have to wait. You know, we don't have to wait physically. Mm -hmm. We can just sleep together. And you've run into that. So hypocrisy well, among it is so Christians. frequent. So sad. It is so sad. Mm. It is so frequent. And but but I think that that's where women can come in and also men can men can, you know, get a little better with this. Um but I I think that for a woman that's why dating is so important and allowing somebody to unfold is so important and that's why we always say unless you are repulsed by a man on a first date because repulsion is very difficult to come back from but unless you are repulsed give the guy a second date give him a second mm. date and then you had a nice time take the pressure off unless you are repulsed and also this is given that we've done our due diligence or the woman has, you know, run a quick background check. And there are a lot of websites that women can use if they're not working with a matchmaker that's doing background checks. I really highly recommend to all women to get a been verified, which is it's an easy website. You type a guy's phone number in and then it will bring up if he has any criminal charges or anything like that. Um, but it's, it is really important. Like, I, I mean, I've, I've been doing this 12 years and background checks are essential. You have to background check anybody that you're dating. Um, but once you've done that initial, initial work, it's then, it's then allowing, you know, it's allowing the person to evolve in the, in the dating, in, in dating. And a lot of times also love bombing is a very real thing. And we have a client that this amazing bachelorette, so lovely. And she had, she was talking to this guy beforehand, um, before they, they met for a date and they were texting, they were texting every single day and really just bonding via text. And then the first date happens and she was like, I felt like I met my husband. And then he pressured her to have sex. He pressured her physically. And she had a couple drinks. So she said, you know what? No, oh, who cares? So she ends up sleeping with him. And now, I mean, it's now been a couple days and she hasn't heard from him. We did not set oh, her up with this man. Sad. But this is so common. It's so common. When you're meeting men on apps, they build this false sense of 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 bonding and this false sense of intimacy, and then they become intimate and then they ghost her. They ghost. That is actually there was a study done. I I rem, I'm trying to remember which podcast I was listening to who the guest was, but he was explaining how they've actually done studies on this and on the men on dating apps that get most of the women is this very small percentage of men and they're the ones who know how to game the system. They don't have the best intentions and then they are getting the most dates, but they're just going through these women one after the next. Yeah. And then you have a lot of these decent good guys on the dating app, but they don't know how to work the system. They maybe don't know how to take the picture, don't know how to match well. And they're actually guys that are decent, but they're not getting matches and you know, they're frustrated. And then of course the whole boatload of women are frustrated because they're not finding someone that they can really make a life with. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Um, and yeah, I mean, we, we've seen this for so many years. Um, something though, that I am really excited about that. I think women are kind of smartening up to this. What, what would the word be? Smartening, wisening, up. wisening mm -hmm. up. I think women are wisening up to this and I love this new celibacy movement. I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of this love because it. this is what you do. <laughs> we love celibacy. We, we have a lot of religious celibacy. people, I like like priests and religious on the podcast and they are obviously celibate for life, but 
yeah, I, le- I mean, don't be be celibate unless it's with your spouse. Yeah. Great and, plan. And I, I think it's also a lot of women think that, oh, all because I, you know, I'm not a virgin. Mm-hmm. Why? I don't need to practice this. I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to kind of keep doing things the way that I've been doing things, but it's not effective. Why is it not effective to sleep with someone when you're dating them? Absolutely. So I mean, studies have shown that when women sleep with the men, they release oxytocin, which they release this huge spike of oxytocin. And this is what happens when you have a baby and when you bond with the child. These are the hormones. They are so strong. So when a woman has sex with a man, she's releasing all these hormones and now she is bonded to this guy, even if the date didn't even go very well and she doesn't even really like the guy. It's And this is, this is a huge huge issue issue. So before she sleeps with him, she's thinking very clearly, but then after she sleeps with him, she is hijacked by hormones. So, and men, the thing is when men sleep with women, they release a cocktail of other hormones, but it's not oxytocin. Um, and actually studies have been done that show how men fall in love. And it's actually in the absence of having sex, they really they need to hit a certain peak of vasopressin, um, and this is that this is a hormone. It has to hit a level in order for them to then fall in love. But the only way that they can hit this level is if they're not having sex with the woman. So it's kind of this, like women have been fed this lie. They've been fed this lie that is that is keeping them single, keeping them traumatized by going through, you know, so many, you know, really intense, uh, intense experiences. But I, our rule is, and it is, you know, it is a rule, we say, no sex until monogamy at the minimum, at the minimum, because we don't only work with Catholic men and women. So we can't be like, no sex until marriage. We would have like, you know, less clients, even though, I mean, you know, um, more and more women that are not even super religious are are inviting that into their lives. Um But yeah, I mean, I think a woman that is a born again virgin or that is, you know, says, you know what, I'm going to do things differently. Um, We've seen more successes with like objectively speaking with those women in 12 years. Sometimes it's that piece of advice that brings them from being going from one long relationship to the next Mm -hmm. into getting married. And getting their ultimate meeting that person and being clear and being able to let go of those men that don't have good intentions, that are only looking for a physical connection or that just don't want to marry them. And they're enjoying the physical connection. They're enjoying their company, but they're that's not their wife. So I think that there's a lot of hope. Even if a woman is not a virgin, you can be born again. I mean, be born again. I think that that is a beautiful thing. Um, and we've just seen objectively so many successes with women that 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 do this. I think it's such a good point. I mean, it's and you're, you're sharing it in such a relatable way because it's even separate from the moral law of, you know, yeah. sex is designed for marriage. There's a reason beyond behind the moral law. It's a reason that's built into even our bodies, like you're saying. And we want people to be happy. <laughs> we want them to be free and loved and to be able to love. And I think it's very powerful to consider that a lot of women are running into these situations where, and, and men, they're in these long-term relationships. Like you say, there's not commitment for life. There's not openness to life children. And you spend your 20s this way, you get into your 30s this way, and you wake up and you're like, I want to be married. Mm -hmm. I want kids. But you've spent years in these long-time relationships, sometimes living together, sexually active. You're all bonded up. Bonded up. You're pair bonded. You're pair bonded. But it's a fake relationship Mm -hmm. because you're pair bonded, but you can't rely on that bond. You're not committed for life. Yeah. And then also there's a children dynamic where a lot of these women, they want They've always thought, yeah, I'll have a, I want kids or, you know, I'd, I'd like to consider that. And then they're in their thirties and they're worried all of a sudden, can I find this man? Like, can I have children? Do you have a lot of clients who are worried about their fertility and the ability to have children? We tend to get successful women um, and a lot of successful women in their typically 
our age range begins for clients at around 28 and then all the way up to like 40, 41. That's really the strongest. That's where we have the most female clients. Men skew a little bit older. However, we do get men that are very marriage-minded and they're in their 20s. Um, They can be in their 20s and 30s. It's fine. But generally speaking, um, especially in a major city like LA, you tend to get um, the men and women feel that that they're ready mm-hmm. once their career is settled. And then they're like, then they're looking around and they're like, well, where's my husband? Where's my wife? Where is she? You know, I've been doing it in this way and it hasn't been working. Um, so yes, we do get a lot of women that once they hit, I would say like 35, 36, 37, um, they, they are, they do have the fertility is on the forefront. Um, and then the then the the pressure is a bit greater um, because you're, I mean, you're dating with the intention of marriage and the goal. But I think a lot of women in their 20s, when you say you're dating with the intention of marriage, a lot of them are not dating with the intention of marriage, just in a in the society, in a well, secular I think, society. I think, do you think that's because a lot of women in their 20s, they think we have all the time in the world. And they're having fun. I mean, I have heard some people say, like, this is actually a great time to be a woman uh, in terms of your career options are endless, your educational options are endless. Everyone's raw, raw, girl boss, you do you, whatever you want to do. And so you can kind of have this whole, the world is my oyster mentality. But then at the same time, you hit your 30s, like you're saying, and you're, you're a lot of these women are struggling. What's your advice? Do you think women should be much more open to love in their 20s if they if they see themselves getting married and not be waiting and waiting and waiting? I think that everyone has their own journey. Um, however, if you want to experience the least amount of trauma in your 20s, I think shifting the mindset from dating to date and to have fun to dating with the intention of marriage and dating in a way that is honoring your boundaries and that is is really you know if a man is showing that he's not a potential if you can't see this man as your future husband and if he lacks these qualities that are essential for your future husband it's getting out of that situation um i i i'm a big believer in encouraging women in their 20s to date intentionally I I also I feel like women kind of fall in between the a girl boss and a trad wife. And I think a lot of women are kind of in the middle because I think a lot of women have these really strong inclinations for both sides and I and I don't think that that's bad. And I I so I I'm, I'm a big believer in as long as, you know, a woman is it is intentionally dating and is living in her values. But at f- first, you need to know what your values are and you need to know what your boundaries are and you need to set those set those guidelines and limits before you even start meeting men and start inviting that romance into your life because it's very easy to get swept away. But then the next thing you know, like we were talking about, you're in this relationship with a man that is not respecting you that has is not you know a, a close to god he's you know close to somebody else and and then you feel whoa what is going on i i need to really shift gears love your neighbor it's a command that's been given to us and for hundreds of years loving your neighbor through healthcare was an important part of living out your faith in fact, healthcare in general was done by neighbors coming together to support each other and ensure that each other's needs are met. This is one of the reasons that I love Crowd Health. Instead of relying on an insurance company who may or may not pay for the bill, Crowd Health allows you to crowdfund so that your neighbors that you are in a community with can help fund those bills. 
What's amazing is that Crowd Health has funded over 5,000 medical bills in just the last two years. Crowd Health is your solution to the insurance companies and the big pharma companies that have created so much dissatisfaction in the healthcare world. The Crowd Health service team is there for you to help you with your medical bills, help negotiate the best deal with the service provider, and then help you crowdfund through the community to ensure that your bills get covered. Take, for example, a young woman in Tennessee who is 19 years old and who lost her fingers in a tragic boating accident. CrowdHealth got the medical bills, negotiated them, and then went to the funding community. Her bills were completely covered by the CrowdHealth funding community. Whether it's accidents like this one, everything from babies in NICU to brain tumors, the CrowdHealth community is designed to support your neighbor when they are in need. What's so powerful about this healthcare is that it's done voluntarily through the principle of loving one's neighbor by all of the people who are bought into the system. Keep in mind, crowd health is not insurance. It's a system to better love your neighbor and experience a community in helping you with your health care. Learn more at joincrowdhealth.com. That's joincrowdhealth.com. And if you sign up today using the code Lila, you'll get your first three months for only $99. Joincrowdhealth.com. Use the code Lila to get your first three months for only $99. What do you think about, I've heard a complaint from a lot of single friends about men. You talked about how these women are, you know, not, they're being basically too picky about just physical appearance stuff and they're not getting to know the guy and giving it some space and time. What about men? Because I've heard the complaint about men that, again, these men want this perfect ideal woman. She has to be 25, a billionaire and super hot. You know, that's like, again, this is a stereotype, but what is your take on that? I think that that I, I see this very frequently. Um, however, I've learned as a matchmaker that it is completely like a defense mechanism almost. And that when you present, because early on, we would just say, oh, this is what you want. Okay. We have so many girls like this. It's wonderful. We're in LA. It's the land of models and actresses mm -hmm. who are beautiful and lovely and all of this. But then we learned that it doesn't matter how beautiful or or objectively a woman is. It's the way that the woman makes the man feel. So it's about like for women that are like, oh my gosh, well, I'm not a model. I'm not this. I'm not that. Be not afraid. If you go into a date with warmth and with, with, with kindness and with femininity, that is what men are really looking for. They, okay, wonderful. She's an attractive woman. Great. Like we've learned, yes, men, they need to be attracted to the woman. The woman needs to be attractive to the men. But we've set up, you know, non-warm and non-feminine, I guess, like objectively perfect looking people. And we're like, wait, what went wrong? And it was that that was lacking. So it was that that was lacking. And then the guy were like, what's what's really at the root of this? So yes, they so I think that men can shift their mindset and men should look for that energy, that warmth, that femininity. And of course, you want to be physically attracted to the person. That's essential. You know, you have to be. But also, you know, that that's why dating apps are so and that's why I'm not a big I'm not a big fan of like photos and all of that because you know, if you just saw, you know, people that you've been attracted to in photos, it, you could be like, "Oh, well, they look quite different and some people they look similar, but it's about that person mm -hmm. and their body language and the way that they're, you know, the way that they're interacting and you know, I think how a lot of it is the way they make you feel." Yes. Yes. Cuz I think men want to feel that there's respect and appreciation and warmth and lo they want to see some warmth and loveliness, not so much in just perfect physicality, but I mean, there's a very biological thing going on there. Like, is this going to be a woman that is going to be warm and loving and empathetic and nurturing for children that I'm going to entrust her with and mm -hmm. she's going to entrust me with? Like, that's a big deal. And I think that's at, at a psychological level very profound for like good men looking to find a way from wanting to get married. Yes. And this is also why I think in society right now, it's, it's just it's it's complicated because, you know, women are being fed so many different messages like the messaging to woman to women 
is so confusing. It's just so confusing. And to men, it's so confusing. And I just think it's such a disservice when we don't when we don't say, you know, when we don't acknowledge the major differences between men and women. Obviously, this is a much bigger conversation, but I think in the context of matchmaking, to me, I mean, I've been doing this for 12 years. Men have a very different way of interacting, of dating, of being than women do. And I think when, when as a society, if we just pretend like everyone's the same and there are no major differences and, oh, it's just whatever, then I think it does people a really big disservice when they're trying to date and when they're, you know, when they're learning about, you know, how can I – how can I, you know, it, how can I not make this person like me? Because that shouldn't be the goal of a date. But how can I connect with a man romantically? Because society is like, and but it's like, well, you know, lean into that, you know, playful nature, relax, you know, be in a receptive light. So it's leaning into that femininity um, that I think is is really big. What's the craziest matchmaking story that you can share? You know, I used to have a different answer to this, but I had a very big, um, uh, probably one of the most famous clients that I've ever worked with. Like, um, how famous are we? Like talking? beyond a, like beyond the 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 most. He was my favorite actor. Like, if I would say like somebody living or dead, who would you have dinner with? It would be him. Um, and I just adored him so much. He passed away last year. Um, he's very well known and I'm, I have, have an NDA. So unfortunately I can't talk about it and that experience. But for me, that was such a life-changing experience in so many ways. Um, because I learned, I've worked with celebrities before I have, but, you know, I learned about how isolating it is, you know, being somebody that is, a household name and everybody knows. Um, I also learned how essential love is. Um, and I actually, you know, found him love at the end of his life. And it was a Holy Spirit moment for sure, because we had been working together for many months. Um, and then finally, I just had this, I had this, like, this, this, you, inspiration. You, inspiration. And I was like, I need to find him his wife immediately. Like, I don't have time. And I had always felt that mm. push, but not at this level. Mm. So literally a week before he passed, and it was very unexpected when he passed, but he told me, he was like, this is the one. Like, this is wow. this is my girl. Like, this you found her. No more women. We're good. Like, my last text to him was, like, a Snow White emoji of me being so excited because we found him his girl, and I had just FaceTimed with him. But I learned, like, it just – it was – it all happened around the same time as when, like, Real Housewives was airing and, like, all of these really fun things for me. And I remember just looking out at, you know, the Hollywood Hills because I live right there and I see the Hollywood sign and I was like, this is – like I, I am changed. Like I have been changed for good because I, I learned that I can really make a huge impact. And also that you don't, we don't know, you know, when our last days are and they, and just to have that love and to have that person and to, mm -hmm. to literally go in a peaceful way. Um, I, it, it changed me forever. So it was it was a very impactful time for me. You can have all of the money, all of the fame in the world, but if you don't have love, mm. um, that it that you know it, it's it, it leaves a huge hole. But I also think there's like a god, you know, a huge, everyone has a huge hole that's God can only God can fill. Um, so you know, I say that too. Tell me about your most unexpected but successful match story. So two people that you're like, anyone would meet and be like, oh, they're not necessarily a match, but it ended up working out wonderfully for them. Yes. So I, we worked with this amazing, amazing bachelor. And this was about six or seven years ago at this point. And he was such a doll and he had, he was not like crazy picky at all, but he had one thing. He said, listen, I'm not wild. I'm not p super picky. I just, I really love brunettes. So if you could just 
focus on setting me up with brunettes. I really only want to meet brunettes through you guys. That would be amazing. So we, as you know, good matchmakers would be, we set him up with all of these different women. They were wonderful. They were sweet. They were brunette, all brunette, all brunette, all brunette. So then, um, he had one match left and for whatever reason, it just wasn't, he was connecting. He would connect with everybody, but it just wasn't like his wife. Um, so finally, final match, um, my sister actually ends up meeting this amazing, amazing girl at an event, um, in Hollywood. And of course, She's blonde. So my sister then, we we had we said, okay, we have to break the news. We have to, we really want to. So we said, hey, are you open to meeting this bachelorette? We told him all about her. We said, she's blonde. And he said, you guys, uh, yes, I'm open. I'm open. Good. I'm open. I know I said brunette, but like, let's try it. Why not? You guys are amazing. We set them up. Now they've been married for five years. Wow. They just welcomed their first child. But it just, I love that story because it just shows that like, this is a superficial thing. You know, I love brunettes too, you know, <laughs> of course, <laughs> but you know, this is so superficial. Like you are self-sabotaging if you're mm -hmm. only, um, if you're, if you're pigeonholing yourself into a certain physical, um, uh, physical appearance. So what can girls do to make themselves more attractive for the dating pool? Like you said, I mean, both men and women are visual. Yeah. But I think that people should put their best foot forward, not in a superficial way, because you need to be inside and out caring about your soul and your body. But what would be some of your recommendations? Absolutely. Um, well, something that we actually, that we have in every single membership, we have every member work with a stylist and the stylist does a date night wardrobe edit and a date night shopping session. Um, because a lot of times, you know, women don't like women dress a lot of times for other women. Like this would not be a good date dress. Like this is just, this oh, is very, yeah, this is, I mean, I'm, this is a, you know, a lot poofy. This sleeves. is a girl's podcast. Dress. This is a girl. We have this guys is who listen for to. the girls. Sorry guys. <laughs> so, so tell me more about that. What, what is it about that dress that you think would not translate well on a date? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's very, poofy and guys don't quite understand like it's it's like poofy here poofy here it's wonderful colors that's great it's it's feminine it's 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 light it's lovely but we, when on on a date it is and people get annoyed because it's like the male gaze but it is important mm -hmm. if you are looking to attract a man and when you're going on a date it's important to keep in mind, okay, like what would a guy find attractive and you know, what would they maybe not? So what, what are the, yeah. What are the standards that a guy finds attractive so in your all, view versus this is for the women? Yeah. Yeah. So we always say you can never go wrong with a fitted black dress and nude heels. Um, and it can just be a fitted dress of any kind. Fitted is your friend. Same for men. Fitted is your friend. You know, you don't want to come with um, a lot of a lot of what's popular right now is like the big baggy cargo pants and like it's just that's not that's that's not the biologically speaking not the most you know attractive thing to wear on a first date um but we always say you can never go wrong fitted black dress nude heels elongate the leg um and the 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 dress it when it when it's fitted i mean it's it it's also about the woman feeling comfortable and whatever she's wearing but at the same time sometimes you can tell that to to a person and then they'll show up on a date wearing you know like my darling sutton from real housewives a cat sweater and sneakers, you know, which is just not first date aesthetic. You know, we want to, we want to. What about like the white t-shirt and the cute jeans and the sneakers? That's more for like the third date when you're going to go to the fair. I don't know what, what yeah, people do today. Totally fine for a third date. And we're old school. I'm traditional. You know, we like we like to put your best foot forward when you're on a first date. And when a woman feels like also we something else that we always encourage and that we actually have the ladies that we work with do, um, they do a they work with a makeup artist to learn like date night makeup application. Um, and like and and 
it, it's it's wonderful because teaches the bachelorettes, okay, you want a really subtle look? Amazing. Like here's what to do and here's what to highlight and here's, you know, maybe not wearing a bright red lip and or or wearing if that's your if you're more outgoing, you know, vivacious personality, go for it. Um, but learning, learning those elements, but really um really giving your best on a first date. And it's also it's empowering. Like it's also for you as a woman, as much as it is for the guy, it's to get you into that mindset. And it's another way to just tap into that feminine energy of like figuring out, oh, instead of just, oh, great. I have, you know, I have this date that I have to go on. What like another one. Great. It's like, oh my gosh, I have this really cute date that I'm going on. He seems lovely. I'm going to wear, what am I going to wear? Okay. I'll do this, this, this. And then, so it gets you into that mindset and, and it, it sounds a little superficial. It is, but this, it is what it is. <laughs> what about what, what would you say to women who I know I, I have heard complaints from some women who say that they're going on all these dates and they're not like sleeping with the guy. They're not living with the guy, but they're maybe seeing a guy or talking to a guy and he's just not committing. Ooh. He's just not committing, even yeah. though he shares values. Yeah. Um, men, I, I'm a big believer. I've been doing this for 12 years. Men know very quickly whether or not they see a woman as their future wife or not. They categorize women. Um, and it sounds like, you know, it sounds terrible when I verbally say it, but this is the reality of, of the way that a lot of men are operating and even nice guys. So would you, so do, would you recommend if you're a woman and you're just going on even dates or you're texting or you're talking, or you're just in this relationship that's ambiguous and you share value. So it's not like you're doing, you're not sleeping together necessarily, but you would just tell her like, move on. Do not waste too much energy here. Well, I think that it's worth a conversation for sure. With the guy. Definitely. Be like, hey, just checking in. What are your intentions here? Or what are you, yeah. what are you looking for here? Because I'm wanting to see other people. Are we dating? Like really, what, what tone would you take with that? Yeah. I think if a woman, if you do really like a man and you, you know, you see this man as a great potential future husband and, you know, you really are just really interested in continuing to date him. Um, I think transparency is huge. So you can say, listen, like, I, 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 I think you're such an incredible man. I'm really enjoying getting to know you. I just wanted to do like an intentions track. Like what are, what are, what, what are you seeing? Like a defined what if he just says, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm conflicted. If a man doesn't know, you can say that's totally fine. However, you know, at this point, if it's been more than, you know, more than two or three months and a man still doesn't know, it's a, it, that's a really great way of saying, Hey, it's, it's a good idea to move on. Mm -hmm. Um, because after I, I think I'm a, I think men know after a first date whether or not they see a woman as their potential wife. And then um, – and men would rather literally – like would would rather eat a – eat a dead toe or like they would then tell a woman that they're not interested in her. Really? Men would rather – like there are so many – men would rather eat a frog than tell a woman that they're not interested in in her because it's so painful to do that yes yes and that's why you see ghosting happening so frequently because it's mm. it's you know a lot of these why guys, is that do you think they're not bad guys and they're not bad women because women ghost all the time too it's just they it is such an awkward conversation to have to tell somebody that you know that hey i just don't see you as my person, but I, I, I'm a big believer. We have a no ghosting policy. So if you are not interested in somebody, mm -hmm. just send them a text, you know, send them a quick text. We even have a, a little form text that we help our, our clients utilize if they're not into somebody, but it basically says like, Hey, listen, you know, Hey Jack, like I had a wonderful time, um, on the date with you or on, I, we've had a wonderful few dates. Um, however, you know, I really, I, I've enjoyed getting to know you. I don't see that 
romantic connection mm-hmm. that I'm looking for, but I wish you the absolute best. So even if you just send something like that, it helps so much in the dating process for the other person, just so it might sting a little bit, but it's the best way, best practices. But yeah, if a man, I mean, I think, yeah, I think men are, men are pretty clear. And if after three months, there's still that level of uncertainty, you can say that's totally fine. I just, you know, I'm looking for somebody that's really certain about me. And, but, you know, I wish you all the best and then just move on. What was the most surprising thing about being cast for the the Housewives of Beverly Hills? Yes. Oh my word. What an experience that was slash has been. Um, I think I was most surprised at how real it was. Um, it really was the real housewives. It was the real Meaning housewives. Meaning it wasn't just drumming up drama for the camera. It was real drama. No, it was real drama. And like when I met Sutton, the she was the the um, cast member that I was matchmaking um, for the season. For the first time, like all of those interactions were genuinely the first moments that I was meeting her. And we, I mean, we had like hours and hours of coaching. And then of course they snip it into like two minutes. So your job on the show was to match make one of the contestants yes, or one of the, one of the, one the, of the women. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. So my job was to be Sutton's dating coach and matchmaker through the season. And I set her up and those were, you know, men that were real guys that were really single. However, I will say that to get men that are open to being on a television show, like I had so many no's Mm. because I asked my real clients like, hey, would you be open to doing this? And, And men that were maybe a little bit better matches in real life a lot of them said no, but those men were still incredible guys. I mean, the two guys I matched Sutton with were phenomenal and Sutton actually, so her big thing was she couldn't get to the second date. So the whole season was, you know, us trying to work through date coaching and, and through that. And that's because the guy didn't want to take her on a second date or she just never liked the guy enough. Usually it was that the guy wasn't asking her mm-hmm. on a second date, but but also it was that the so men no that liked ca- her no cat didn't... sweater. Yeah, yeah. No Sutton. more cat sweaters for Sutton because yeah, it was also that she the guys that liked her, she didn't want to go on second dates with. So I think for people yeah. of faith, sometimes, you know, maybe they're thinking, you know, if you've got a lot of strong values and your faith is really important to you there's a spiritualization of the dating process that can happen where you almost like look down on what feels superficial, like, oh, wearing a certain outfit or, you know, you know, sharing in a certain way on the date, like not going too intense and like just having fun. I I think some people may listen and say, well, that sounds worldly or superficial. Why is it actually good advice for people, even if they're, especially if they're people of faith and strong convictions and values? Absolutely. Um, There are levels of sharing. Um, when it comes to dating and relationships. And I think people struggle, people, really authentic people struggle in the dating process because they go right to level five, which a level five share is an intimate, you know, deep and, and, and really personal. It's a personal share. So they then bond more quickly, which then makes the dating process a lot more challenging because all because you're sharing and you're bonding with somebody that doesn't necessarily mean that that person is interested in romantically continuing to get to know you. Mm -hmm. So the levels of sharing are really important to understand. Um, I'm not saying only talk about, you know, shopping and, you know, going to parties or whatever somebody would perceive as superficial, but it's also recognizing with yourself. And it's, it's a really good practice for somebody that is, you know, finds that they're, uh, they're really intentionally dating, um, to, to, before they start anew in the dating process to take a step back and write out like different levels of their experiences and just not pre-plan everything that you're going to share on a date, but 
first date topics that are fun and easy travel you know um travel who your favorite spice girl is you know what your you know who your favorite boy band was but like things that you know i know for me i love talking about like the early 2000s and traveling and like you know what i mean there's y2k certain, yeah like i love so fun <laughs> so fun and that's gonna light me up and i'm gonna talk about you know I'm going to talk about things that I'm excited about talking about. Um, and also, I mean, housewives too, but you know, but, but, but those are, those are quote unquote superficial things. You know, you're not gonna, you don't want to trauma bond with somebody on a first date. And I think that a lot of times that people are very well intentioned, but they're giving their trauma, they're giving, they're using it as almost like a, um, a therapy session and really, you know, connecting and deep, but you can talk about your faith. That's totally, that's beautiful. You know, I'm a big encourager of, you know, if you say grace, say grace on all of your dates. And even if it doesn't yield a second date or a third date, it's going to kind of, you know, remind the person that you're meeting. Wow. Like we're praying together. That is so beautiful. And you can, you know, set the intention of having a really wonderful evening, getting to know somebody new. Um, and then you're inviting God into your date and that's beautiful. Um, but it, it, you don't have to talk about your testimony on a first date, save that for the third, fourth date. And then you can talk about these more intimate things. What is the craziest thing that you've seen being a matchmaker in Los Angeles? Ooh, Lord. I mean, I've I I I have really seen it all. You know, I've seen and we haven't worked with these people, but I think the <laughs> most shocking things are the background checks that we do and that we get and it's just it's jarring because, you know, you would think if that people are who they say that they are, but then we like run a background check and something bizarre will pop up. Um, so I think it would be in line with the background checks. What's the craziest thing you've seen in a background check? Oh my gosh. We once ran a background check on this bachelor. He was referred in by another matchmaker and we were like, Oh my goodness. Like this man was, he literally just got out of prison. Like, <laughs> like two weeks ago, he just got out of prison and they present so well, but that's why it's so important for women to it's trust, but verify. And like, it's not an easy dating scene out there by any means, even taking this out of the equation, but do you always God, recommend a background check? Always, always. Even if it's like Vinny's best friend. I, Vinny meaning like your, I, you know, brother-in-law or something. Yes, exactly. Like Vinny, the brother-in-law. Well, I mean, Scott Peterson, he was introduced to Amber. But he didn't have a felony record he beforehand. I know he didn't have one. But so he how was, do you how do you make sure you don't marry a, a, a killer? An axe murderer. A, oh my gosh, an axe murderer. Well, you know, that's where discernment comes in, Lila. That's where discernment comes in. Do you in. have the alarm bell sense with some I, people? I do. I, I will say that this is something that I kind of pride myself on. I'm really good at spotting red flags um, with with members. And usually when I feel like something is a little off, I'll kind of chat with the team and be like, hey, ladies, like, did anyone else think this? And then lo and behold, we'll do the background check and something weird will come up or even a Google search and something will pop up from a long time ago. What do you recommend for women, especially women? I think it's most dangerous when it's somebody within the community, mm. right? Or it's the yeah. friend of a friend or it's the person who's showing up at daily mass or coming to church. And so it seems like everything is on the up and up. Yeah. What do you recommend to be some tools maybe or an approach to pr be protective. Yes, definitely. In dating, to not accidentally date the red flags. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, you know, like I said, there is a wonderful website called Been Verified, and you just pop that person's cell phone number in there and it will it will come up and Anybody dating? Do you needs, have to pay nine ninety nine for that, or is I it, think so it's something okay. I, something it's like worth that? It. Yeah, yeah. Like I have girlfriends that use that when they're dating, just because it's um, and even basic members of ours. If I'm date coaching them and they're dating on their own using the apps or meeting somebody in person, I always encourage. It's easy. It's inexpensive. Get that. Um, but I also think it's. I think when somebody is um, the the beautiful part is that you are going to be very well protected you know if you are if you are walking if you're being guided by the lord and mm -hmm. like you know a mm -hmm. lot of 
listeners are Christian and Catholic. So I think that, you know, really taking that time in the dating process to discern um, and to, if something pops up as a red flag, it's not saying like automatically, oh my gosh, he's, you know, he has a second family or he's a murderer. It's learning about that person and it's asking for divine intervention as well. Um, but it's also letting your, letting a friend group know. I'm, I'm also a big believer in community and in strong female friendships. And I don't know how people date without having a strong community. Um, I think dating is very, very difficult. So I think that when, when somebody is grounded in their community and in their strong female friendship specifically, um, I think that that can help a lot as well. Um, but you also have to be careful that, you know, you're with women that are also the intention for the group should be if they're a single girl group, it should be like, Hey, we, you know, we would love to, you know, date with the intention of marriage. So, um, it's also being aware of who you're surrounding yourself with, but I'm a big believer that, you know, God always reveals. Mm -hmm. So I think like, be not afraid because, you know, you're being very well protected. The enemy will, will, um, can, and will come in through, um, through partners. Um, that is something that's very common, but it's also when you ask for that protection, I, I do believe that you will be protected, but it is important to, to recognize when something is not of God. What you know? is, what is love bombing and why is it a red flag? Love bombing. Oh dear. So love bombing is when somebody is giving intense communication, compliments, um, just like constant, like literally a bomb of love, adoration, affection, attention, and it's premature. And this is when you barely know the person, either you maybe just matched with them on a dating app or were just introduced to them or, you know, just met them at a coffee shop or at church. And that person is like, wow, you know, God told me that you are my wife. And they're just like bombing you with, and this is the thing also that a lot of um, religious people need to be aware of that they can utilize like love bombers if they recognize mm -hmm. that you do have some kind of um, religious belief system, they can and will tap into that. We saw that with a client that we're date coaching right now because she just came off of something like that um, where it was a religious love bombing. And that is a very dangerous place. Um, so that's why it's really important for women to uh, – I, I know I hate that people don't like when I say this, but especially for women dating a little bit like a sociopath in the beginning and having women should date like a sociopath. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> the fact that you just said that is so funny to me. No, no, you said but it. I, I know, repeated it. <laughs> I know, but the fact that you just repeated that like just shows me it's just so funny. But yeah. in a way of just not getting overly attached and or emotionally bonded mm. and committed to a man until he has actually proven who he is. How long realistically is that process? Because I know yeah. so many girls who they think it's been a few weeks. We've had these deep conversations. Maybe they've like already snuggled up and had a kiss. Like they're like all getting bonded. They're trying to be good girls. You know, they're doing, trying to be good. They've had some really romantic experiences. He's like telling her, you are the best thing in the world. And so she's like, we know each other. You know, it's been through, I met his mom last yeah. week and it's been like a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we say a three month marker is a really great time to have that exclusive conversation. Wait, so you're saying to wait three months typically for, before going exclusive before because a lot of girls I know they'll go exclusive after, after two like dates one yeah one or two dates I think that three months is a really good time um because it does provide that like time is a single girl's best friend um and a single guy's best friend too because everybody is on their absolute best behavior in the very beginning however it typically is at that three month mark where you'll start to see the real person person. Um, but also you'll get to know the person a bit better beyond just what 
beyond just the um, the superficial of it all. I um, think what you're saying is so essential. And I think this is one of the best pieces of advice that we've had on the podcast about dating because it's counterintuitive for a lot of women yeah. and maybe even men who start dating and they're having a fantastic time and so many boxes seem to be checked. And then you get this affirming stuff that happens like you meet a family member and you love the person or you, you know, you meet the dog or whatever. And it just, it just seems to just check, right? But it's amazing how after just three months or even into that fourth month, yeah. if you're already exclusive at this point, things usually start breaking down yes. at the three to four months. And if you hadn't gone exclusive, if you hadn't gone you know, whole hog into the relationship, if you'd given it time to get to know them a little bit more casually mm -hmm. with still the intention of marriage down the line, but the purpose here is to really get to know them in time and space, which is how we're human beings, right? Yeah. Absolutely. then you actually discover a lot more when you give it physical time. Yes. And Father Mike Schmitz has an amazing video about this. I and love, he talks, I love that, that he's like the, the dating. He's amazing. The dating gold standard advice from Father Mike Schmitz. I love it. He's what phenomenal. Does he say? But he says that so many Catholic men and women get so excited and they want to mm. push the fast forward button and just like go from meeting to marriage. But there are relationships have a natural progression. And, and what he says is actually solidified by relationship studies and science. And uh, Dr. John Gray, who wrote Men Are From Mars, mm -hmm. Women Are From Venus, he talks about the five stages of a relationship. Mm -hmm. The first stage is attraction. The second stage is indecision. The third stage is exclusivity. The fourth stage is engagement. And the fifth stage is, is marriage. But a lot of times um, people go out of order in these different stages. What's indecision? So I get attraction first stage. Indecision. What's the second stage of indecision? So the indecision phase happens in basically every couple. And if a couple says, I never had that stage, okay, maybe, maybe you had it for an hour, but the, it's that indecision. It's, it's that, oh, is this person somebody that I really could see myself marrying or is it not? So that, I mean, that, that stage is essential to happen, but the, the, but a lot of people skip that stage. They go to exclusive before go, really the vetting process, so absolutely. to speak, or getting to know them, just giving them space and time to know them. Exactly. Or and they, they think, maybe they think, oh, I did my indecision. My indecision was that I was single. Yeah. My and now I'm dating someone I'm attracted to. So I'm in. Yeah. I mean, I can understand why people want to just go in at that point. Yeah. But you're saying give it physical time. Give, give it, it months. Give time. it several, several dates. Give it, yeah, give it time and don't become exclusive immediately. I also love um, Kate Warner. Mm -hmm. She is now Kate uh, Tomlin, I want to say. Not like Chris Tomlin, but like Kate. Um, Kate Warner, she has this amazing podcast called The Heart of Dating. Mm -hmm. um, and she's like a Christian influencer. She's fabulous. And I was on her podcast when she was single. And um, and now she's married. And I think mm -hmm. she just welcomed her first child. And I, I just love her but she specifically did this uh this this dating experiment where she was not exclusive for I think it was three or four months and she was open to the different men she said hey listen I'm I'm dating other men right now and you know I'm not going to be exclusive until x amount of time and may the best man win essentially um but she was open about it and I think that that's okay to be open and it's okay to to date to get to know somebody and not to jump immediately into exclusivity because you have to get to know somebody that's what dating is for there's nothing wrong with dating as long as you're doing it in a respectful intentional way you mentioned earlier there were some things that you would recommend women don't do on first dates and in dating, like make it an interview and show up all sternly and, you know, unwarmly and maybe don't wear puffy sleeves. Was that one of the <laughs> advice pieces? Um, wear a black dress. I don't know. What, what would be other tips for that date to best present yourself well? And is that really yes. a tip? Don't wear puffy sleeves. I are mean, we gonna are we gonna like stand on that? I think we can stand on that. Right. Like I just, Sorry, guys. I just wouldn't do it. They I are just, cute. I think they're, they're cute so on some women. Cute. But they're I agree. So My cute. husband, when I've worn, I mean, 
my husband is always so sweet to me in what I wear, but I do see that. They just don't get it. I do see that. It's like a man repeller. Like they're. Well, it's like little girls wear puffy sleeves. I mean, it's super cute, but just, yeah, yeah, it's just keeping in mind. I mean, and listen, if you love a puffy sleeve, go for it. This is not a make or break. Like I'm not, you know, but just generally speaking, yeah. Approaching a first date for women, um, really just coming in with that mindset of warmth and, and fun, it sounds like. Fun, vacation. Playfulness, mm-hmm. vacation mindset. Literally, it's just enjoying yourself, being in the moment, being present, really being 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 mindful. Oh my gosh, I'm using the the term of the of the TikTok right now. But really being in the moment mm-hmm. with the man and really getting to know him and appreciating appreciating him in that in that interaction. But yes, I I I I love I think flirting is just such an un, untapped lovely Thing that men and women can both do, you know, when they're when they're dating and just being playful, giving a compliment. Um, for men, we always say give a woman a compliment when you first meet her. And I think for men as well, um, men rarely get complimented. And so, you know, if, literally, I've done so many talks where I would say, okay, men, raise your hand, like if you were complimented in the last week and like nobody raises their hand and like, so, and then, okay. In the last month, and then maybe like three raise their hand. I'm like, okay. In the last year. And then like maybe half will raise their hand. Wow. So women were so used to complimenting each other and getting compliments. So it, it does make a huge difference when, if a woman is like, oh, wow, I love your outfit. Oh my gosh. It's, I love those shoes. Or I love that haircut. Yeah. Your know. hair. Like this is, oh my <gasps> gosh. It looks so great. Aww. Like, and it really just puts a guy like, okay, okay, I did, I, I did the right, I wore the right, th- like I wore something she liked. So maybe the guy doesn't even like, it's not like he's consciously thinking, I want to be complimented. It's more just that he's just doing his life. And then when he gets that verbal affirmation, especially from a woman, whether even it could be a sister, but you know, certainly a girl he might be interested in, it can mean can make such a difference. It makes such a difference. It really does. And it makes me want to go compliment my husband. I know, compliment him. I mean, I do actually, because he's easy to compliment. Oh. That's beautiful. Yeah, he really and is. sometimes the guy is. make isn't. me cry. I don't oh, even know why. <laughs> like <that's so laughs> all this conversation about matchmaking, I'm like, I'm so glad <laughs> I'm married to my husband. <laughs> that was really good. Like, Bless you. Especially the stuff about the felonies. No, I'm just, oh, I'm just kidding. It's so scary out there. <laughs> but also, what women can do, I love um, just being appreciative. And a lot of these guys, a lot of a lot of time dating for men can be a thankless job yeah. and these poor guys well, especially if they go out of their way to shoot their shot and to try to ask a girl out and the girl you know is like it's not super attractive so i don't know like i i think the rule of thumb of going on a date with a guy I mean, the only reason not to go is if you think he's an actual max murderer, like he's like just yeah. super, or there's you're something literally creepy. repulsed. Or if you're, you're repulsed actually by him. repulsed. Yeah. But if you're not Don't repulsed go. and he's, there's not like some walking red flag. Yes to give him the honor of a coffee. You know, I don't, yeah. what is the harm that can be done? And then at minimum, if you are repulsed or there's some other issue, you can say, thank you so much for the honor of asking me out. You know, I'm really, that's very, I'm very flattered. You know, yes. like I, I remember when I was dating a lot in my twenties, I, I had a script. Like if there was like, I'm not going to go out with this guy. It would be like, I'm really flattered that you would ask me. Thank you so much. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not interested like that, but I really appreciate you asking me. And I think even that, even that is good etiquette. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And yes, I, I think that's so beautiful, Lila. And I, I also, I love on the actual physical date, if a man and when a man pays because men even though this was a hot debate at the last talk that I did, um, I am a big believer that men should always pay. Um, men should always pay on the first Why? date. Why do you believe that? I mean, I'm I'm old school. I'm old school. And, and I also think it's just, you know, if the man is asking a woman to go on a date, it's, you know, he's ultimately – he's the protector. He's the provider. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, this is his role. And also biologically speaking, because I like to, I like to learn kind of why, because in my Mm -hmm. mind, I'm like, oh yeah, a guy should always pay. But then I'm like, there must be some psychological and biological backing to why I feel this way. And there actually is. Um, When men pay a bill, 
they experience a hike in testosterone. And testosterone is among one of the hormones that need to be released when a man falls in love. Mm. So women are actually doing men a service by allowing when they pay, they because these guys are experiencing this, this spike of testosterone, which then is going to help and aid and assist in the falling in love process. But I will say if a woman goes on a date and she is just repulsed and absolutely there is zero chance of ever going on a second date with this man ever, ever again, you're free to offer to pay. That is totally fine. I would say offer to pay. Um, it, I, that's just in my, as a Why, matchmaker. Why, is that going to help let him down more gently? I just think if like, you are oh, not trying it, to it almost, man's it's almost like a, It's almost like a turnoff in a good way. Like you're saying, yes. okay, you're, you're definitely not interested. So I'm going to like help resolve this for you to not make you interested in me by because it's almost like when you let the man pay, it almost for the right man can spike their interest was Absolutely. what you're saying. So it's almost a generosity to say like, let me get this bill. Yeah. And by the way, it was great to meet you, but I'm not romantically yeah, interested. Yeah, 100%. If I you're like just that. completely, I think it's, mm. and this is, listen, it's it's a woman's, she, you do not have to pay because sometimes the payment is just sitting at, on the, sitting across, you know, from the, the poor soul, you know, women have all been on those rough dates with a guy that you're just like, oh my goodness. And now I have to pay, you know, but I, I will say, I think that just, if you really want to date with, um, with, uh, in a, in a really value-based way, it's a nice thing that you can just tell yourself like, hey, if I'm not into this guy, let me offer to pay and like really try to pay. Um, but I think it's it's a good way of looking at things and kind of shifting the mindset that men should learn that if a woman is letting you pay, you've got a shot, you know, mm -hmm. that's exciting. That's wonderful. All right. There's so much more we could talk about. There's we got to so have you back more. on the show. Okay. I would love you're to. You're not far away. So you're coming back here. Yes. There's super more. Close. Thank you. So how, how can people find your website, Alessandra? Yes, absolutely. So um, if you want to be matched by our team of matchmakers, go to matchmakersinthecity.com. And then um, also just connect with me on Instagram. It's really the best way. It's I'm at matchmaker. Alessandra Conti. It's we really put, long. We'll put the link in the put, description. Yeah, A L E, and then I should pop up. You know, pending I'm not shadow banned. Oh, who knows these days? But <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Alessandra. Thank you, Lila. You do beautiful work. So do you. You do beautiful work. A huge thank you to our partner, EWTN. EWTN is the world's leading Catholic network, reaching millions with the truth about the faith, entertainment, and news. Check them out at EWTN.com.